It's the story of, for me, a lifelong love affair with the United Nations that began uh, as a young graduate student in the United States and uh, the head of my Department of International Affairs, uh, knowing a man at the United Nations who he'd called to see if he could get me an internship. And through uh, that kind of opportunity, I suddenly found myself as a very young graduate uh, sitting on the 38th floor uh, writing correspondence in the impeccable English, which at the time was almost my only professional skill. Uh, but it was an extraordinary opportunity to learn, and just down the corner was the, just down the, the corridor from me was that legendary British UN official, Brian Urquhart. And just the prospect of loitering in the corridor to get a word with him as he raced between uh, managing different peacekeeping operations uh, was sufficient uh, professional reward for the months I spent there. But strangely, I actually had a desk outside the office of what was then the Under Secretary General for General Assembly Affairs, for whom I was working, an American diplomat. 30 years later, I found myself inside that office uh, as the Deputy Secretary General. So uh, I, I, in that sense, had a global career uh, which literally traveled a couple of yards from start to finish, uh, from desk to behind the door. Uh, uh, and, but in between, um, I, I went off after my internship to, to write for The Economist and was uh, covering a particularly tortuous uh, Labour Party uh, fight in Manchester during the bad old days of, of, of old, old, old Labour. Um, and uh, there was a, a call uh, from a recruitment officer at the UN High Commissioner for Refugees saying, any chance we could persuade you to go uh, to Indochina at the time of the boat people crisis? And so off I went, having earlier tried to get into the organization and written those applications that I heard you in that breakout session being instructed to write and urged to write and without any success time after time and then suddenly a refugee emergency, a need for lots more staff and, and I was in and from there to Central America and the Horn of Africa uh, and an extraordinary uh, experience in humanitarian operations uh, and uh, at the end of it I was allowed to sit down and write up with another great British uh, UN official Nicholas Morris the handbook of what to do if, as a young UNHCR field officer, you were confronted with several hundred thousand refugees and had never done it before. And this handbook, which still remains in print for this, today's generation of UNHCR field officers, is full of wise advice like, uh, if your refugee camp is located beside a river, make sure that the sanitation is downriver from the drinking water. Uh, and out of these quite simple uh, but often overlooked adages, a very successful book was constructed uh, and, 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 and written. Um, but you know, from there, actually, again, like I'm sure many of the older half of this, uh, this, this audience will recall those, those periods when you felt you were hitting your head against a wall why could your superiors not see that the organization had to change and adjust to new realities? It, 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 it led me to leave and go off and do other things around the world for uh, a dozen or so years. But a great friend after, uh, as I left and thereafter was a man who ran personnel at the time for UNHCR. And what he particularly liked about me was that if he wanted to go and smoke a cigar beside Lake Geneva outside the office, because he wasn't allowed to smoke it inside, he could always count on me uh, to, to, to leave my desk and go with him, not, not to smoke the cigar, but to, to enjoy the discussion with him as we ruminated by the lakeside and wondered how the UN might be a better place. Now, that man's name was Kofi Annan. Uh, and so uh, this friendship made over cigars and the lake uh, had a great dividend for me later in, 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 in my career because uh, having gone off to be a political advisor to emerging democratic leaders around the world. Uh, I was lucky enough to get called on by the World Bank to come and uh, do essentially the politics and communications of the World Bank. Uh, and from there, Kofi called, newly the Secretary General, to ask me if 
I would consider being head of UNDP, which there was no consideration needed. I would, was passionate about the organization.